share this video with a friend or family member and I pray that you would be blessed today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Reformation. We thank you that through your servant Martin Luther that he rediscovered the truth of your word. We ask that you will give us a love for your word, that we can grow in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son. Holy Spirit. Amen. A thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Ever ending, your glory. Your will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the inside out.
Please join me for confession and absolution. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your eternal punishment. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I have a virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading is from Psalms 32, beginning with the first verse. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and whose spirit is in no deceit. When I keep silent, my bones wasted away. When I kept silent, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Galatians chapter 4. What I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave. And although he owns the whole estate, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. This is the gospel of the Lord. Of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel co comes from Matthew chapter 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. My name is Pastor Aaron Putnam, and I am filling in for Pastor Lenny this morning. It is a pleasure to be with you. Uh, I am the city director of Link Bay Area, and it's wonderful to be with you this morning to share God's word. Uh, the text that engages us is Matt, the gospel lesson from this morning. It's Matthew 18, verses 1 through 6. About a year ago, I did a funeral for a gentleman named Don. Don had lived with his parents his entire life, 60 years. Uh, Stan and Carol, Don's parents, told me about their other son, Steve, who had also just died six months before that. Their two boys, Don and Steve, were both intellectually disabled. They'd needed the care of their parents throughout their entire lives. And about a week before Don's funeral, Carol had sent me a book of her reflections on her life, including her relationship with her boys, Don and Steve. And in one section early in the book, Carol shares about her intentional efforts to teach and share God's word with the boys. And here's what she wrote. That day I felt the Lord was speaking to me. Start looking at each of the boys with their childlike faith. You will also learn from them how to live as a Christian. 
At that point, I started to see their Christian faith shine through the child's eyes. Their walk of faith is truly God's work, as his word is engraved upon each of their hearts. A childlike faith. Uh, We hear something similar in the text that we have for our gospel reading this morning from Matthew 18. Listen again to verses 1 through 4. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So the disciples ask a really bad question. Who is the greatest in the reign of heaven? Uh, They're doing what they do in other places in the Gospels. They are playing the game, the compare game, the compete game, the jockeying for position with Jesus game. And so Jesus puts a child in their midst and he refuses to answer their question, at least at first. He puts a child in the middle of them and says, greatest? You want to know about the greatest? Let me tell you, if you don't turn and become like children, you won't even get in. To become like children... Now, does that strike you as an astonishing thing for Jesus to say? Uh, If it doesn't, then you're probably thinking like a 21st century person living in the United States. Uh, People who think that children are positive role models for adults. You know, everything I needed to learn, I learned in kindergarten. Now, if you could go back and say that to a first century Palestinian, he or she would think you are crazy. What are children in the ancient world? They are weak. They have little or no social status or influence. Children are without understanding. That's why you have to train them up. Children have no power, and they cannot care for themselves, and they are not wise. Children are not capable, and they are not innocent, like many people wish to think. They cannot provide for themselves, and they are utterly dependent upon the care of others. In other words, children are little kids. They are not great. And if the disciples of Jesus want to come under the blessing of God and what he is doing through Jesus, their master, then they need to get this straight. Away with all the comparisons and be needy, lowly, utterly dependent children. To such belongs the reign of God. See, if you approach Jesus with something in your hands, you will be sent away empty. But if you come to him with nothing, like a child, then you will enter and receive everything he has to give. Here in this place, in Zion, where God is reigning because his word is freely being proclaimed and taught, how do we end up playing the game? The compare game, the compete game, the jockeying for position with Jesus game. Well, I would say like most people, we're tempted to think things like, well, I'm not a bad person. I'm a good spouse. I'm a good parent. I'm a hard worker. I'm not messed up like that other person in my family or that other person at my work or that one that lives next door to me or that person on the news. And so we jockey for position. We jockey, we compare ourselves to others, placing ourselves in some kind of hierarchy of who is greatest in God's eyes. Now, we don't say it makes us greater, but why would we care so much about it if that's not what we think? So pick your favorite gauge for greatness. Jesus overturns them all. He shatters them all. Jesus doesn't play the compare game like we do. We compare ourselves to each other. And I can always find someone who I think hasn't lived as good of life as I have. But Jesus doesn't compare us to others. He compares us to himself. And guess what? None of us measure up. We're no different than anyone else. We're all broken. Uh, We're all rebellious people who fall short of the glory of God. And we're all destined to the same end. Death. Jesus doesn't call us to make lists of all of our good qualities and deeds and then compare ourselves to others. He calls us to be little children. And that does not mean innocent. It means needy, 
It means small and utterly dependent upon him. It means I no longer look at myself, but I look at the reign of God. It means I look to Jesus and I say to him, I can't. Those are the words of a child. I can't. I can't fix myself. I can't make it go away. I need you. I need a savior to protect me, to forgive me, to save me from myself. This is what it means to call upon the name of the Lord and to be saved. As the old hymn says, Chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. He died that I might live on high. He lives that I might never die. As the branches to the vine, I am his and he is mine. And everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, at this point in the text, the disciples' question has gone away, hasn't it? Uh, But Jesus brings it back. He actually brings the question back and he fills it with new meaning. He says, therefore, whoever humbles himself like a child is the greatest in the reign of heaven. Whoever is like a child is the greatest. That means the one who is most in need. The one who is most unable is the greatest. You are the greatest. Jesus came for people like you and just like me, struggling, needy people. In this community of believers, the greatest is the person who is most in need. And this truth transforms our life together. It means the brother who is in the deepest financial need, he is the greatest care for him. It means a sister who, with the deepest sorrow is the greatest. Care for her. Don't put a stumbling block in her path. It means that the brother or the sister who is being deceived or lured by temptation, he or she is the greatest. Go after him. Seek after her. Bring them back. Today, some sorrow or loss or fear means you are the one most in need. It means you are the greatest. Next week, next month, next year, It will be someone else. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. This is the reversal of the reign of God. For those who would compete or compare or jockey for position, Jesus has nothing. But to the lowly and the needy, he reaches down and he cares for and he dies for and he rises for, and he will come again for the children, for you, for me. I'd like to close with a poem that uh, Carol wrote for her boys, Don and Steve, and I think it sums up their lives, but also your life and mine, all because of Jesus. God is my living glee, had his son who did plea so my soul could be free, for I am a child of God. God is my guiding light in the darkness of the night. It forever shines bright, for I am a child of God. God is my joy in song that I sing all the day long, because in him I am strong, for I am a child of God. God is my resting place, holding me in his embrace through his merciful grace, for I am a child of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.